Babe of the day. Babe of the day. Joy Lansing. I like Joy Lansing so much. You'll remember her when you see her in anything. Wow. She was in a lot of TV shows and B-movies during the 1950s and 60s. Joy did play some bad girls, but most of the time seemed to land roles as friendly, bodacious babes in comedies. One of her most memorable roles was as Gladys Flatt, wife of bluegrass musician Lester Flatt, in several episodes of the Beverly Hillbillies. Joy was also a singer and model. If you were around at that time, watched TV or movies, saw advertisements, looked at pinup pictures, or read men's magazines, you saw Joy Lansing somewhere. Her real name was Joy with a Y Brown. And I don't want to say that she was like a terrible actress or anything because she absolutely wasn't. She wasn't the best actress by any means. I think she was probably a serviceable actress. Uh, you know, she didn't really have all that much of a range as far as acting goes or whatever, but she was always very likable. She did play a variety of different roles. You know, she played good girls and bad girls. You always like to see her as a good girl better because you want her to be likable, but... Uh, she did play a lot of different parts because, like I said, she was in so many different movies and TV shows. I mean, she was just always on. She started modeling when she was 14 years old, and she was pretty much a model for the rest of her life. She never really broke away from that. I mean, yeah, she's probably better known as an actress to a lot of people nowadays, but basically she was always a model you know she's always posing always trying to look good I mean she wore outfits that accentuated her figure I mean that's what she played off of her film career began in 1948 and in 1952 she did have like a small uncredited role in the big hit musical film singing in the rain she got top billing in a movie called hot cars and it was a crime drama about a stolen car racket. But really, her breakout performance would have been in the Bob Cummings show. She was just a recurring character. And from 1955 through 1959, she was in, oh, maybe about 125 episodes of it. But she portrayed the character of Shirley Swanson, who was one of Bob's models in the show. And uh, the role was written specifically for her. Uh, she had been noticed, and they said, oh, they just got to have her in the show because, well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> and she was good in the show. She had a lot of funny moments in there. Of course, she was just one of the many women who was always just infatuated with Bob all the time in the show. Always vying for his affections. And it gave her lots of opportunities to look, well, something like this. <laughs> Being a blonde bombshell in the 1950s and 1960s, that put her right in line with others like Jane Mansfield and Mamie Van Doren. And if you're any kind of a film buff, you know that uh, Jane Mansfield and Mamie Van Doren, for all their strengths and attributes... Uh, they weren't always in what you call her the most highbrow movies. <laughs> and a lot of times, uh, Joy would, you know, take on roles that even, you know, Jane Mansfield and Mamie Van Doren, you know, couldn't or didn't want to do. That happened. But Joy was always working. So, I mean, she was definitely, I would say she earned her success. Even though you can always say, says, well, you know, there's better actresses and everything else as well. Yeah, but she put herself out there a lot. So, yeah, she deserved her success. I'm not going to fault her for anything like that, you know, whether she wasn't in enough good movies or anything like that. She did get to act with big shots like Frank Sinatra, so you know she had to be somewhat esteemed. And she was in a lot of major productions. She played herself in an episode of I Love Lucy. So yeah, she did quite well. She actually thought out of all the men that she worked with that Ozzie Nelson 
of the Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, she actually thought that he had the greatest sex appeal of anybody that she worked with, period. I mean, that was that was her choice. But she had a lot of different looks. I mean, you could just... She was very good at modeling, that's for sure. Oh, her with Granny on the Beverly Hillbillies. That was such a great role when she played Gladys Flatt, the wife of Lester Flatt on the Beverly Hillbillies. And what's really funny is that the wives of Flatt and Scruggs, their names were the same, but the act they were definitely actresses who played their wives. A notable TV appearance for her was in an episode of The Adventures of Superman in 1958, and the episode was called Superman's Wife, and in the episode, she actually marries Superman, you know, beating out Lois Lane in the show. And that's still a pretty well-remembered episode. It was rumored, and I don't know if this is absolutely certain, but it said that they were working on bringing back Superman on TV before George Reeves' death, and they said that they were going to actually make the show about, you know, Superman and his wife, with Joy Lansing, you know, being the leading lady in the show. I don't know for sure if that's totally true or if it was going to happen, but unfortunately, you know, we'll never know. <laughs> it would have been a very interesting concept, I think. I'm guessing they probably would have dropped the Lois Lane character flat, but ah, she had her chance. <laughs> Joy Lansing actually has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for all her contributions in television, and she really deserves it. I mean, she she should be there. Dirty picture. Ha. Her last movie was in 1970 called Bigfoot. And it was pretty cheesy. I really wanted to like that movie because, you know, hey, it's the Bigfoot monster. Joy Lansing's in it. Yeah, I would have to say their creativity was pretty tapped out. I mean, they called her character Joy Landis, so obviously they weren't putting all their A effort into that one. And maybe that's why she didn't want to do movies anymore after that. She would come pretty close to being naked in some of her pictures, but believe it or not, she never actually posed nude. That was one line that she didn't want to cross, but she came close enough to it a number of times. That's a cute little swimsuit right there with the little ruffled skirt. One thing that I noticed a lot in pictures is that she liked wearing little polka dot bikinis and swimsuits. She did that a lot. I don't know if she just really liked polka dots or if it just happened that way. But you will see that a lot in her pinups. That little stripy play suit is really interesting too. <laughs> but I also thought she looked good, even fully clothed, you know, like in the full dress outfit. Some of these pictures, you know, you'll notice as well, some of these she just seems bigger than others, you know, if you know what I mean. There is a reason for that. She actually did get implants at some point, you know, it was just part of keeping her out there, you know, she had a long career and after a while, you know, every actress's career kind of starts to dry up after a while, so to compete, that's what she did. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. <laughs> Joy was also a nightclub singer, and she was actually quite busy on that circuit. Uh, she did get a chance to sing in some of her television appearances, like in the Beverly Hillbillies and such. 
But if you look around, she actually made some Scopatone videos, which were pretty cool. Actually, they were done almost like music videos would be done, you know, about two decades later. Oh, here's her with Superman. Superman's wife. Her with the tiger. That was another kind of a cutesy cheesecake thing that they did back then was they would have women pose with, you know, tigers, whether it was tiger rugs or tiger stuffed animals. It's a look that never gets old, let me tell you. I said they, they could do it now and it would still be sexy, but for some reason people just kind of got away from all that kind of cutesy kinkiness. But she was known best to everyone as a glamour girl. And she tried very hard to keep up that image. Like I said, she had a pretty long career doing it. But it took a lot of work to keep, you know, up her appearance like that. And she actually had claimed in an interview that she found it rather limiting, you know. She thought she was held back by her own image. But I don't think it's such a bad thing to be known as a glamour girl. I, there are worse things. You could be remembered as Roseanne. Ha! <laughs> Nobody wants to be remembered as Roseanne. It was a lot of fun doing these pictures. I had to be very selective because there's just so much of her out there. Thank you very much for watching this tribute to Joy Lansing. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did. If you aren't aware of her work well then for one thing you haven't seen very much tv and movies from the 1950s and 60s <laughs> go out and check her work just see what all she's done thank you very much and have a great day